Kevin Barnett for Carbide 3D and today we're outside the studio and at the golf course because we made this custom putter out of this block of aluminum. I'll take you through all the steps on how to do it, encourage you to make your own. This is a really special project. You don't want to miss it. Back in the Carbide 3D studio, this was a project that embarked on research and development. You start in the software. You have to design your part first in CAD. Then it's going to be on to CAM. Fusion 360 is the weapon of choice for this project. It's simulation features, modeling capabilities, as well as the possible tool pathing choices make it perfect for a complex project such as this. What a journey this is going to be. It's a three material process to get to the end, to get to the finished product. 3D printing is step number one. If you have access to 3D printing, this can be an important step. The ability to make rapid and massive changes to your part in a very short period of time is super handy. First one, a little bit too small, and the angle of this receiver is not something that's going to be easy to do on the HDM. So on to print number two. Print number two, a little bit bigger, and you start to see the eventual shape take form. The wings are there, this receiver is straight up and down, the face not as big as you need it. So, on to the next. The third version, and this is starting to really look like our finished product, all the way in aluminum, nine total versions later. This one is about right. These undercuts are pretty big, we'll address that coming up. So, 3D printing is complete. Where do you go from there? You go to MDF, and the reason you do an MDF step is so that you can start to improve your tool paths at a very low cost in terms of material, and also a very low cost in terms of time. Time becomes the big issue. Cutting aluminum takes hours. Cutting MDF takes minutes. Version number one, still in the block in MDF. That's because the top side turned out pretty nice, but the locator pins and the location of the model yeah, that didn't work out. So, learning happened. On to version number two. This time, the flip worked. Got the part out. There are still some problems with this. You can see it's not really all that nice in terms of getting the tabs cut off, and these were more like giant supports than they were tabs. And also, we're not getting down the entire face from the A side. A putter is not 90 degrees. A putter has some loft to it. That loft would create an undercut on the flip side. So you have to machine it entirely from the top. That means you're going to need long quarter-inch tooling or all the way to 3 8 If you have a Shapeoko 3, 4, or Pro, you're going to have to stay with quarter-inch tooling. You're going to need some longer tooling and you're going to deal with some chatter. If you have an HDM, it's where the machine can really shine. Go to a 3 8 collet, go to 3 8 tools, and you can make the front of this pretty easily. Version number 3, and this is... Good. Couple of little defects. We've got the signature on there now. We've got the interior cutouts here that are a bit smaller than in our previous 3D version. This is looking good. It'll send us on to aluminum. The rule of three is in effect in this project. That is, anything you're making for the first time will take you three versions to refine and get a quality part. This first version, we ended up with some lines here that had to be corrected in the software. Additionally, I hadn't gone down past the entire face, so I had to file the bottom off there. But the flip worked. We got this post here, the mounting hole, that was developed well. And we did have a few other weirdo little issues in the back here pulling off those giant supports. But overall, for a first cut in aluminum, pretty darn nice. I was happy with this. We're also losing a ton of time and weight with these back cutouts. This particular design, as is, comes in at 295 grams. Historically, that's a pretty good number for a putter. Nowadays, you're looking for 3, 350, something like that. You can easily add weight to this particular design, be it with brass inserts or with tungsten and maybe epoxy. There's a lot of options there. You can also alter the design a little bit or come up with something totally new that weighs what you want it to weigh. Version number two was supposed to be a step forward and it definitely wasn't. All kinds of issues on the top side. Things had to change in the programming. And just like you, sometimes I can get intimidated by a project. The distance in time from this version 
to the next one you're about to see is a few months. Occasionally, you need a project to just percolate in your mind. You need to work around a few other projects, perhaps, and get back to what you were doing, and then give it another whirl. Rework the cam, order new tooling, and give it another shot. That's where we were at, headed into version number three. This is the end result of version number three and what you saw earlier at the golf course. This thing was really nice. In the middle of the project is when I switched to those 3 8 tools because I had the reach here with the quarter inch tools, but I shattered one of those quarter inch tools because it's just too long, there's too much chatter. If you're gonna do this on any machine besides the HDM, I think you should change the design so you don't have to go quite so deep into the pocket you can still use that 278Z, that shorter tooling. In this case, I went to 3 eighths, a flat and a ball to make the face. It worked out beautifully, and the bottom as well. This one-off version did require a bit of filing to reach its final form. As you refine your cam settings, you will be able to eliminate this step. I then moved to Scotch-Brite and several high grits of sandpaper onto about 2,000. And finally, onto the polishing wheel. So much work went into making this a mirror finish. It's still not 100% the way I want it to be, but for a first finished version, I'm really happy. On the back side, you might have already spotted it, some infill done here with some enamel in different colors. I like this too. I think you have some options here with tungsten and some epoxy, or you could put a brass inlay if you wanted to add some more weight. You could add some brass inserts here. There's a lot to play with on the bottom side, and you can see this in other putters that people put together. There are 3D printed parts, there are magnesium parts, there are tungsten parts, there are stainless steel, steel, aluminum, brass, all kinds of nylon or carbon fiber. There is literally almost anything you can do with a putter to make it uniquely your own. With the HDM, with a Pro, a 3, or a 4, you have so many options. It's one of the great things about this project you will have a totally bespoke thing at the end of it. The flip setup for this was done in two different ways. The A side was done from the middle of the block, absolutely middle, middle. When I cut the profile around the outside, that allowed me to know the exact size of the block on the flip. And that also centered the piece in that particular profile cut, took away any potential movement in X or Y. Once that's done, you can make a pocket, a known pocket, and put this block into that corner. Now you can go from the lower left corner to cut the B side. Two different zero positions utilized to locate the putter in space. This is the kind of project that had a massive amount of learning to it. To list off everything would take a whole nother video. From the CAD design, to the cam profiling, to the flip machine process, to moving on to trying to cut aluminum at that depth. We made changes to our machine. We added air to the HDM just for this project. It then got put on the other machine, the Shapeoko Pro, also for future metal projects. We have a great video about how to do that and how easy and simple a process it is to add to any one of your machines. With that in mind, we can dive as deep as you want in the comments below or on the community pages for Carbide3D. Also, a special thanks to Winston for his help with the Fusion 360 side of things throughout this project. Could you make this a business? Somebody already has. Scotty Cameron machines putters of all kinds, along with some of their accessories and whatnot. Scotty Cameron putters are world renowned. They are fantastic. They're beautiful. They're many varied. Can you enter the marketplace with your own unique putters in runs of five or 10 or 20 limited runs of a signature item? Yes, you can. Price point for this? I'm going to tell you $350 or higher. And if you have a cut lock, that's going to be about 10 bucks. You can run that over and over again. It's all about refining your manufacturing process, your finishing process, and before that, the design. You could definitely get this down in terms of time to where you're really earning some serious money if this is what you want to do. I know there are people out there in the community making putters, some with tungsten as an insert and making them out of maple or wood. Hardwood would be a lot of fun, something unique to talk about at the golf course. For me, the final takeaway from this is that I would love to do another one. My son is the one who designed this particular putter. He's left-handed, this is a left-handed putter. I need a right-handed putter. I wanna design my own. I hope you out there will take on this project, whether for yourself or for a friend, just as a challenge perhaps. Start with a blade putter and then move on from there. Another fun project in the books. We'll be back again here in the studio with more ideas, information, and inspiration. All right.
Bags are packed. Send him home. Same spot, every time. That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me!